Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you for taking the time to join us today on the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe peoples. Really happy to be here this morning and to take a look at this project by Leuna, which we know is a pension project, to build 591 units right here. Uh, fantastic to have an opportunity to speak with the workers, to see the amazing work that is taking place right here to do something that we know is critically important in Hamilton and that is to build more housing. And so I want to thank uh, Joe Mancinelli and his team for uh, the great tour and uh, great to have the opportunity to speak to the workers here. We know that um, skills trades is so very important and we know that um, it's important to make the investments to ensure that we are training workers in order to take on these projects. And that's exactly the type of investments that our government is doing. There's been a number of investments, including the doubling of the UTIP um, a program money, because we know that organizations like Leuna and unions have such an important role to play in the training piece for workers. We know that one of the top priorities is the health and safety. And just last week, we had the opportunity again to tour the Leuna Training Center and to see uh, people there having the opportunity to get the skills and the training that they need in order to take up these jobs is absolutely so important. So, Joe, to you and your team, we want to thank you. Uh, tremendous uh, work that you are doing to ensure that people are getting the skills that they need, having the opportunity for these great paying jobs, and at the same time, ensuring health and safety, which we know is a top priority. And just touring the site, you can see that uh, with Leuna. And so thank you for the amazing work you're doing. My, um, I'm very happy today to have the honor of introducing Minister Seamus O'Regan. As we know, Minister O'Regan is the Minister of Labor and I have to say, I previously had uh, that portfolio and I could not think of a better person, a more passionate and dedicated person that really knows about the importance of labour in this country, who I know is taking a great deal of time to go across the country to tour projects like this, to talk to workers, to do what we are doing this afternoon, meeting with a round table of women to talk about how we can get more women in trades, um, and, and, um, and he has been taking a, a great deal of time and energy because he knows the importance of speaking with workers and, um, and ensuring that the government is making those important investments so that we can have projects like this move forward. So it's an absolute uh, honour and uh, pleasure for me to welcome Seamus O'Regan uh, to the microphone now to share a few words and um, uh, Minister O'Regan, I want to thank you for taking the time to visit Hamilton today and for your great leadership on this file. Philomena is uh, spinning that a bit. You know, actually, when I got the job, she looked at me and went, yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> no, she didn't. Uh, I want to thank Philomena uh, and, and Lisa and Chad for welcoming me to Hamilton. It's great to be here with you guys. Uh, we don't see each other enough now in the summers, right, because we're all back in our ridings, we're touring the country and doing good work, and uh, it's good to be back in Hamilton. Um, uh, Philomena remains a constant uh, source of support and counsel for me. I was actually tempted last night to give her a call at 2.30 in the morning when I found out that we resolved uh, the Via Rail uh, dispute, thankfully. That is the last thing we needed in this country now was more travel problems, trust me. Uh, but uh, we, uh, we, as Philomena knows and, and, um, and, and Chad and Lisa, we have, we have an incredible group of federal civil servants in our federal reconciliation and mediation team who, man oh man, they just, they know how to get it done. They know how to listen and intuitively they know how to lead people to a deal that all parties are happy with. And I think that that's where we are with VIA. Um, that's on the heels of uh, uh, another good success that we had with PureLater only about a week and a half ago. Um, before that, it was CP Rail. Uh, of course, uh, that got a little dramatic, but uh, we, we got to a good place with that and with CN. So I, I think that what, what you're seeing is, first of all, two things. Let me just say right at the outset that if you had told me when we were dealing as a government with COVID, if you had told me that two years after we're getting through the worst of it, that we would have record employment in Canada and one of the lowest unemployment rates in our history, 
I would have accused you of smoking something that we just legalized four years ago. Um, but we did, and this is where we are. Uh, and that is uh, a huge, that is hugely, I think, a, a, well, I think it's a part of, uh, it's on the part of everybody. I think it's on the part of workers, I think it's on the part of employers, I think it's on the part of, uh, of, of government having the, the good, good sense to listen to those people who create jobs and the people who perform those jobs. But now we are in a position where we uh, don't have enough people. Joe was telling me that you, you guys need 30,000 more people in Ontario alone today just to do the work that we need to have done. 30,000 for Lyuna alone. So we need more people. One of the things that we can do, and I'll just I'll employ all of you to do this, empower you, spread the good word. If you know young people, frankly, people of any age, they're interested in getting in the skilled trades, open their minds to it. It is great work. It pays well. It's challenging. It's interesting. It's satisfying. So let me, uh, and I say that as a son of a lawyer, and I know my dad would say, world has enough lawyers. That is not who we need right now in our country's history. Right now, we need more skilled tradespeople. That is what is holding back this country, right? We're doing really well. The economy is doing a lot better than any of it thought it would. And in fact, we're leading the OECD. We're leading the G7. You're hard pressed to find a country that's doing better coming out of COVID, but we could be doing more. And uh, like a lot of people in this country, I'm not satisfied. So I want us to do more. We've got a big challenge there. The other thing, aside from drawing more people to the skilled trades, is taking people who hadn't considered it before and knocking down maybe some of those barriers. And what I'm, I'm talking about here is inclusion. And when I say that, that's not just like, you know, a nice thing to do. That's the way I think some people interpret it. And it is, it is a very important thing to do. In any profession, it's important that you see yourself, whatever community you may come from, represented. But the bottom line is that we need people. We need the best people, and you will not get the best people if you have barriers up, right? We need more women. I met the most committed group of young women, women and men yesterday with an organization in Windsor, Ontario called Build Your Dream. And they are absolutely determined to get more women into the building trades. And let me tell you, after an hour and a half with them, I don't think anything's gonna hold them back. We need more of that. We need more of that. So I implore you, let's get more people thinking about the building trades, let's get more people in the building trades, and let's support them in any way we can. We as a government are doing that. I think, I think Joe, I think you and, and your organization are more than familiar with that mainly because we take the time to listen to what you need. Uh, no longer coming up, conjuring up plans without consultation in Ottawa, but actually talking to people who know what they're doing on the ground and saying, what do you need? What can we do? What can we do better? Uh, so with that, um, I'm gonna shut up and listen and get Joe Mancinelli to come up and, and take the podium for me. Joe, good to see you. Thank you, Minister. Uh, what a pleasure uh, to have you with us, uh, together with our very own uh, Minister of Procurement, Philomena Tassi, uh, who has been a real champion uh, in our community, and we're very pleased to, to have you uh, with us. Um, and also our members of Parliament, you know, Lisa and Chad, uh, great to have both of you with us as well. It takes a lot of teamwork and folks working together to make things happen. And in fact, today on this job site, where we have hundreds of workers, uh, many of them Leuna uh, workers as well, our contractor, Matt Staten, uh, who is here and has done a great job uh, on this site, uh, Mike, our superintendent, all the workers here, all the Leuna members that worked very hard. Uh, this is a job site that we just learned has zero, zero accidents, 100% safety. Fabulous. Great work, but that's because of the strong team uh, that works together in getting two 30-story uh, buildings completed. Uh, these are our Leuna Pension Plan investments in downtown Hamilton. Uh, this is a $300 million project uh, that in 2024 uh, will be realized. It's a rental. So these are two uh, towers that will occupy folks who want to rent. 
And unlike the old days where you had ghettoization for affordable housing or everything else, these rental units will house folks that are paying market rent and folks who need subsidized uh, rent as well. And that's important because then folks can kind of live together in, in projects like this um, that are living side by side. Um, and we are absolutely um, committed to ensure that we build more housing, um, especially in the, in the downtown core where we can have more intensification. Um, this is important because we talk about the shortage of labor that we have. As Minister O'Regan mentioned, we need 30,000 people yesterday in the construction industry in Ontario alone. But we also need housing. You know, if we're going to bring more people in into Canada through either immigration or whatever, um, they need places to live. And that's why good affordable housing is really important. Uh, we're building another 12-story uh, unit units on um, uh, Hunter Street, just a couple of blocks away from here. Uh, where we've asked the city for approval. It's taken a bit of time. It's something that we need to work on as well is to ensure uh, that the process of getting projects off the ground has to, be, has to be sped up. And that's a comment that's not just coming from Leuna, it's coming from every development group in the province of Ontario. We need to get projects off the ground much, much quicker if we're going to put people in these, these homes in, in an adequate period of time. And I'm not sure where we're going to put, if we had 30,000 people tomorrow come into Canada, I'm not sure we have the housing for them. I mean, that's another crisis that we face as well. So we got a lot of work to do, but what gives us the satisfaction is we're working with a federal government that listens, a federal government that delivers. And we're very, very happy to have our two ministers that are with us today and, and members uh, of parliament with us here today because there is a ton of work that is also coming out from the federal government. You know, I had the opportunity to sit on uh, the uh, uh, National Roundtable for Construction that meets every couple of months. And I have to tell you, it is staggering the amount of work that is coming out just from the federal government alone. Over $22 billion a year is coming out from Philomena's uh, uh, ministry, Ministry of Procurement. That is a ton of work that just the federal government alone is actually tendering out. And then you have the private sector, which we're a part of, with all the work that's coming out. So the stress on getting more people is fantastic. But the good news is that it's great for the economy. And you know, I keep on hearing economists talk about the R word. How can you have a recession if everybody's working? If everybody's making money, if everybody's spreading that money around in the, in the economy, it's kind of silly to be talking about a recession. And so we've got a great team here at our federal government, a great team when, within this group here building these buildings. I have complete confidence that the economy here in Canada, because of the leadership we have, is going to thrive and be very successful. So thank you again. Uh, M Ministers O'Regan and Tassi and our group for joining us here today. We're proud to have you with us and proud to have you as our partners in moving our country forward. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, we'll now move to questions. If you could state your outlet and uh, your name before you start your question, that would be great. And I believe we have a microphone handy. No? <laughs> Gone one over there? Awesome, great, thank you. Ken. Good morning, Ken Mann from CHML. Uh, there was talk about knocking down barriers. Uh, what are the main barriers to getting people interested in careers in, in construction trades? Uh, there are a number of factors, and, and maybe Joe can speak to it too, but um, I would say, and, and Philomena, you may want to weigh in, because I know you've got great experience with this as your time as Labor Minister, but I would say uh, some of it is culture, um, and uh, you know, I, I just came from the, the Voices Bay mine on the coast of Labrador, 
Um, very proud of the fact that uh, we've got one third indigenous workers up there, Inuit and Inu from, uh, from Labrador, who are true partners in the mine. That is, it's groundbreaking, right? Like that's exactly what we want to see for more natural resource projects. Um, uh, but uh, we uh, still only about 13% women. And increasingly, I mean, people think that in the natural resource sector, for instance, uh, the perception is that you know you're you're going in and in a mine they're they're you know going back like the old days going with a pick and shovel and, and just chipping away at it. This is a significantly mechanized and uh, automated industry um, for reasons of safety and productivity. Um, so what you're what we need more than anything are smart people and and trained people, um, uh, regardless of your gender or where you may be from. Um, so I think perceptions have to be knocked down, and we're we're attempting to do that. You can't do any better than doing that by example. Um, you know, for those 13% at Boise's Bay, for instance, who are women, they lead by example when they go back to their communities. Same with the one-third who are indigenous. So I think that that's very important. I think we come in on, on training. On anybody who's interested, we want to be able to train them. Uh, anybody who shows any inkling or curiosity at this rate in the skilled trades, we want to train them. Um, so, you know, we're able to do some of, of that work, and we're working hand-in-glove with unions. I mean, that's why instead of, like, replicating it. We're, we're working closely with union training centers. We've doubled the budget and our supports for them. Um, so working with unions, working with employers, um, and also working you know, heavily with provinces and territories. I mean, I, the, the federal labor program operates about five, six percent of the economy. The rest is through provinces and territories. So I meet frequently with my provincial and territorial colleagues to say, we got to do something. And they know we do too. I've got good relationships with all of those ministers. And you know, the more that we can work together, for instance, on issues like labor mobility, being able to make sure that people can travel across this country to wherever the work is. So we've got a labor mobility tax credit that we introduced, which will help with that significantly, I think. And that's a little close to home. I'm a Newfoundlander because, uh, you know, we tend to go wherever the work is. We help build the oil sands in Alberta and Saskatchewan. Anytime I get on a plane back and forth to Ottawa, it's filled with Newfoundlanders who are traveling to wherever the work is. They want to continue to live home because, as the joke goes, and I don't actually think it's a joke, how can you tell the Newfoundlanders in heaven? They're the ones who just want to go home. So we'll go wherever the work is and we'll keep coming back home. And we don't think that, you know, we, sh we should be rewarding people, not penalizing them. Uh, for traveling wherever the work is in this country. So those are the things we try and do. I don't know if you want to. Yeah, I think uh, Minister O'Regan's hit it right on. I, I think of my own experience, Ken. So my father, as you know, was a, a proud steel worker. And uh, I would go into his garage, and he, he was trying to teach me how to weld. And at that time, I never dreamed that that would be in the realm of possibility for me. Our government wants to prove that that is in the realm of possibility. And there are barriers that, that underrepresented groups, including women, face. And we are working hard to bring down those barriers, which why we are having conversations with organizations like Build a Dream, which Minister Reagan mentioned. They are doing phenomenal work. And meeting with women around tables where they are able to share with us some of the barriers, the concern about not being supported, the concern about being on a site and not having the amenities that they need, the concern about being on a site and making sure that they're treated equally, and all those things, the spirit is there. Workers here want to, to have a, a, an open uh, workplace where we are inclusive. And so our government is committed to do what we can to bring down those barriers, which includes providing this as an opportunity, providing the skills training, putting the, the supports in place, having conversations like the one that we are going to have this afternoon with women so that we completely understand what those barriers are. So when they come to work, they know that they're not going to get past when that with the hammer or the, or the shovel or that they would be included and they will be supported. Um, every step of the way and that's what our government because we know that that's an important investment a significant one and you can you can hear Joe talk about how women are better at some of the trades maybe Joe you want to say that he shared that with Minister O'Regan and I where health and safety for example they can they can maybe do the job better and so we want to be inclusive and we want to include women in this there's a great opportunity and we want to make their skills come to a, a, a reality and that they can develop their full potential. We know that we're going to be better as a result if we do that. I wanted to ask
I wanted to ask Joe and the minister, you know, we're, we're, you're talking about 30,000, a shortage of 30,000 workers. What, what's the practical outcome of that? But, you know, investors are talking about they're not going to go ahead with projects in the future if they don't have the manpower, you, you're not, you know, if projects are going to be delayed. So what are you asking for to make up for that? And could you talk about, um, you know, possible delays in projects, uh, you know, you know if, if that doesn't come to pass? And, um, you know, if, if, do you anticipate that projects will be delayed in the next couple of years just because of, for that very reason? <coughs> So what we have seen um, in the past several months is, is definitely uh, a huge concern in the industry about whether or not some projects can actually be, be started um, and whether or not they can be finished on time and whether they can be finished on budget. Those are the, the main concerns. The budget it has more to do with the supply chain and what's happened through COVID and the impact that that's had on the cost of a number of, uh, of projects. But the shortage of labor is probably the biggest problem uh, that we have. And in Ontario, you know, when we say 30,000 jobs are needed yesterday, then that might, might even be a conservative number. Uh, it might be even higher than that. And that's only Liuna alone. We're not talking about the shortage in the other trades as well. Um, so what do we need to do about it? Clearly, we're doing a lot. And a lot of it we're doing in conjunction with the federal government, with the UTIP program, uh, through our training centers. We're training a, a ton of young people, uh, folks that need to be retrained, uh, women, indigenous folks. We're doing that already, but it's not enough. It's not enough. You know, clearly we need to get a, a lot of people into the industry fairly quickly. The only way we can do that is to have increased immigration in Canada. And we have been lobbying. Um, the federal government, uh, Minister Fraser in particular, uh, and a number of other ministers uh, uh, prior to, to Minister Fraser, that, that we need to increase immigration into Canada. The key, though, is to make sure that that immigration is ready to come and work in the trades. So that's the kind of tricky part, is to make sure that there's some vetting done. I'm not sure exactly how that's going to work, but some vetting has to be done to make sure that the folks who are willing to come to Canada are also willing to come and do construction work. Because if that doesn't happen and we let 100,000 new people in, and I think the shortage is now about 400,000 in Ontario alone uh, that we need, but if we need 400,000 people and 400,000 come in and don't want to do construction, we haven't really, we haven't really solved the problem. So there has to be some kind of vetting. Uh, that goes on. One of the other programs that the federal government has agreed um, to extend in a permanent basis is getting undocumented uh, workers that are already here, that are already working, and they're overstayers. They came to Canada, they started working, didn't fill out the proper paperwork, and the federal government now has agreed to make those pro programs permanent to make sure that we don't deport people who are already working because they haven't filled out the proper paperwork. And that's a big deal. I mean, it doesn't increase our numbers by a dramatic amount, but at least we're not deporting people that, that, that quite frankly, want to stay and work in Canada. So there's a number of really positive things that are happening and a number of things that need to happen. And I know that these things take time. And when we met with Minister Fraser, he made it very clear that I wish he could snap his finger and let all those folks in, but it's complicated. I mean, we have to vet people, obviously for security reasons as well, to make sure that that the right folks come into Canada because we're a very peaceful country as well. And so it's complicated. And, and from our point of view, from Leona's point of view, we simplify things. We say we need people, period. But we understand also that it's not that easy. I was, uh, I was just reminded of something, Joe, as you were talking, you bring up some good points, and my phone went off and I had to put it on silent and it's, Omar, the uh, Omar Al uh, the uh, the transport minister, say thank you for Via, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, it, it's uh, it's something that we don't often talk about, but you know, phones have changed everything. It's changed our lives. It's changed how the government works. Um, you know, we're a real team. It's a it's a good group. Um, we talk all the time, and we are all fixated on this issue. Sean and I talk about it. The minister of uh, of immigration um, uh, talk about it with Philomena. Talk about it. 
uh, with Carla Qualtro, the employment minister, uh, with Omar, um, with Christia, uh, the finance minister. It's a full core press. This is one of our top priorities as a government right now is getting our heads around this. It is holding back projects. I mean, I couldn't give you an estimate on, on exactly how many it's holding back, but if Leona alone in Ontario is in need of 30,000 people, it's not good. Um, and uh, we're ambitious, and our infrastructure needs work. Um, there are also, you know, I think some of it is post-COVID. Um, you know, there's been a lot of attention about our airports and airlines lately and aggravations there, and a lot of talk about flight crews and, uh, and pilots. And I'm totally biased here, but, you know, my summers uh, going through college, I, was, uh, I worked ground crew at Happy Valley Goose Bay International Airport in Labrador. And uh, that's rough work, right? The guys who uh, take off, generally they're guys, uh, who take your bags off the plane and, and cargo and they didn't have any of those fancy uh, belts like they do now, and we had to lug it. Um, you know, th those, those, a lot of those ground crews went off to other work. Um, and, you know, might be working in warehouses or whatever, but when you're working outdoors in winter in Labrador in minus 40, lugging bags and cargo off the planes and on the planes, it is rough work. A lot of these people are underappreciated, and we appreciate them now. If anybody's flown lately, your plane may land on time, but you might be parked there for 20 minutes. Why? Because you're waiting for a ground crew. So there are a lot of jobs uh, that people took the time during COVID to say, I want another job. I want something that treats better benefits and better working conditions. And for people who are in tough jobs, like I would argue, airport ground crew, we gotta treat, start treating them in, uh, with the respect that they deserve. So this is a big issue, full core press, and we are, uh, we are all fixated with it. Yeah. Mr. McNaughton, uh, there was, there's one fund where there was, there's, there's an allotment of immigrants, 9,000 um, are, you know, per, per, annually. He was hoping to double that number, but he was recently speaking this week that only 90, the, the top up of this one program, the name I'm not, I can't remember at this moment, only 700 more. He was expressing disappointment. Could you, uh, could you talk about uh, what the, what the, Hold up is on that, or why why he, he would be disappointed? Why you couldn't satisfy his demands on that? I I, I text him right now. We text uh, quite frequently. I mean, uh, I think you know this. I, I'm the kind of guy who doesn't. I don't uh, have a lot of time for partisanship when I'm trying to get problems solved. I've got a lot of time for partisanship when I'm campaigning, uh, but not uh, not when we're trying to get problems solved. I work with Monty. Uh, it's a it's a big issue. I'll find out what's going on, and uh, you know we'll coordinate, see how we can help. Um, you know, I've, I've uh, found him very good to work with. Uh, and, uh, you know, when I was natural resources minister, I spent a lot of time working with the energy ministers in Alberta and Saskatchewan. Um, and with energy ministers right across the country, I do the same as labor minister. These are big problems. I just find Canadians don't have a whole lot of time for partisanship when it comes to this sort of stuff. So I'll talk to Monty. I'll text him after. Hello, Minister. Dwayne Worth, CACH. Yeah. I have two jobs here. Hang on. <laughs> There's multitasking. Congratulations on the VIA settlement. Thank you. Are you anticipating, especially with the, the frustration around uh, Pearson Airport and all the problems there, are you anticipating any more labor issues? And how are you uh, going to get ahead of that? Yeah. I mean, you're, you're constantly watching for it. Uh, there are certain ones that we know are coming up. and. Uh, I think the, the ones that I listed off are pretty significant. They were on my calendar for this year, CN and Philomena notes. <laughs> I think she, I think they must, you must have carried them with you, as you, when you left in your sleep, I think you still think about it. But you know, big, you know, when, when we, CP was a real scare and it, it's a huge, it's a huge issue. Uh, it's the only time I got calls from the White House. Uh, and those weren't easy calls. Um, because uh, it, it just doesn't affect the supply chains within our country. It supplies North American, it's North American supply chains. So you got uh, CN, you know, we were, we were concerned about that. Um, but I think that there is a, a want and a desire to get things settled. I think that, um, look, I think that right now when you have a labor shortage in this country and it's acute and you know that there is uh, inflationary pressures and workers are acute to that, uh, you know, employers also are well aware that those concerns on their, on their employees are real and they need those employees. So there's a willingness to settle, there's a willingness to come to an agreement. Um, I'm, you know, I, I applaud all of these parties for sitting down and doing the hard work. It is not easy coming to an agreement um, on, for either side, 
Uh, so, you know, I applaud them all. There's a, I just think that there's a willingness in this country to get things done. I think that on, on everybody's part, they understand the importance of this. Um, so uh, I'm, you know, very thankful. I don't take any of it for granted. We watch all of these issues uh, like the hawk. Uh, I don't want, uh, nobody, nobody wants any surprises. Look, we've got a housing shortage right now. We've got a climate change. We've got energy. We've got affordability issues. People are worried about inflation. We have a saying in Newfoundland, uh, my nerves are rub raw. And Canada's nerves are right now rub raw. And I think that employers at the table and unions at the table know and appreciate that. And I think they're interested in, in finding good settlements where they can reach them. Thanks, all. Thank you very much.